Hey, welcome back to another video. This is video three of the Modern Leadership Series. We're so excited that you're here. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about how driving improvement and changing behaviors over time, just like we see here with the purchasing did. Um, One of the things we talk about in the book is discipline, the yeah. role of discipline. Yeah. And as when I was interviewing uh, Yabe-san, you know, the former mm. chair of Tese. Yes. Uh, he talked about the importance of it. And, and the word he chose was scolding. He actually said it that you know if they don't own if we don't own and, and keep our commitments to ourselves then you must scold them and I said, Yabe san I don't know if scold is going to be a word that's going to really resonate. Yeah, yeah. Certainly not in the U.S. is going to resonate. But we kind of arrived at this idea of discipline that it was really important, you know, but not discipline in terms of getting people in trouble in terms of right. you know you know a negative connotation, but that. The organization had to have discipline in terms of if you, if you create a dance to your cellular manufacturing, then we must be disciplined to follow the yeah. dance, you know, to yeah. complete the dance. And that leaders had to have discipline. And, and sometimes that is a tough conversation. Yeah. And sometimes it's the discipline to get out there expecting great results when I've got my own issues going on. And then discipline, you've talked about it a lot from the ownership standpoint, you know, like team members really being disciplined about what they personally bring. So for, for um, you know, O.C. Tanner, if, if we were to go out there and talk about these, would, you know, what would people resonate with in terms of, you know, what it takes really, you know, from a discipline standpoint to keep this culture going, to really kind of yeah. feed life into it every day? I think discipline is the hardest thing. Mm. I think because the natural order of nature is for things to fall apart. Mm. And there are forces working on us all day that are trying to pull away at our discipline. And it takes, it takes focus and effort to stay disciplined at all levels. A leader standard work, mm. a team member standard work, it is easy for it just to kind of slip away. And so you've got to constantly be reinforcing it. Now, I think there are some of our systems where I don't worry about discipline anymore. It has become such an ingrained part of behavior. It's just, it's natural. And, it, and I think after enough doing, something becomes, you don't really have to focus on doing that anymore. It just happens naturally. But um, some things, uh, you know, I found it early on in, in our journey that I could get something going and then step away. And if it stopped, or fell, the hardest thing was getting it going uh -huh. again. Uh -huh. And so early on, I realized I've got to keep applying this effort to keep things going. And that is discipline in my mind. I, I found there was nothing more important than that momentum, keeping things going. And, and, and I would stay focused to make sure that it didn't die. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like we'd come a long, long ways if we were more disciplined, especially things like team meetings, strategy deployment, improvement systems, and so forth. The ones I was just saying, coaching. Right. right. Um, and yet, in the early days of the pandemic, uh, everyone else is going home. The factory's still working. We're now making, you know, medical face masks and and still providing the product to our customers. And about three weeks uh, in, people are starting to get a little bit more comfortable. I'm, I'm seeing less fear in their eyes and more of a, we got this kind of thing. But I realize they've stopped holding team meetings. They've mm. stopped doing daily improvements. They've mm. stopped doing coaching. Everything stopped. And it was almost like they were just hanging on to what? Just daily work. And I had to scold them. You know, and I had to say, no, no, yeah, no. My son would be proud. Yes, I know he would. <laughs> I, I had to tell him, you know, when, when things get tough, you double down on the systems that you know work. Right. You don't step away from them. These are, these are the systems that are going to save us in this difficult time. And, and we had to get it ramped up again. Thankfully, it wasn't a lot. Of, all it took was the reminder that we're going to do it. Right. And, and what I kind of sensed immediately from everyone was like, of course. Of course, we need to do this, and and it ramped back up again. Mm. But what an interesting learning for me that after all this time, it could stop that quick. And of course, it was a is a highly unusual set of circumstances. But uh, again, the discipline. I suppose if you weren't as concerned about discipline, you'd think, well, yeah, let's let it slip for a while. Let's uh, let's just get by. 
Right. And uh, I just don't think you can do that. If, mm. you, if you're really going to do this right, you've got to have the discipline to get back on top of everything. Do you find that it's um, difficult for new leaders to emphasize those things, to step into those, let's say, sometimes uh, uncomfortable conversations about reinforcing the discipline? Or does that, is that not an issue here because your systems are pretty strong? Yeah, I think in those three months before someone gets a leadership responsibility, we're ingraining in them, this is the way you do it. This is what yeah. you have to do. And they're coming to meetings and they're seeing everybody else doing it. And they're realizing that's how you succeed. The way you succeed here is you follow the plan, you know, do the systems, live the principles. Um, that's, that's how we guarantee success. And, and they can also see that that is what brings so much satisfaction to the work. That's why people love coming to work is because the systems work. So it's not like I'm doing something that's irritating people. I'm actually doing the thing that brings joy. Right. Super important. Yeah. Even just the sustaining of it, you know, having a system that it's not even drudgery, that, that the emphasis of it being people, I'm sure, yeah. will help that momentum of them wanting to continue to engage in the system, wanting to see it continue to go yeah. because there's such real benefit back from yep. being a part of it. Good comment. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> We, I told you I'm not comfortable with the uh, I, know. I, won't, I, won't, I okay. won't congratulate you anymore. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so leading and lagging metrics, I know you use them a lot here. Uh -huh. I mean, I've uh -huh. seen the same Shingo videos that you're a rock star in that, you know, talk about that relationship between leading yeah. and lagging. What I'm interested in is, is not, not so much do you use them or see the value of it, because obviously you do, but I'm interested in the ones that are maybe people related. Organizations seem to have a harder time, like maybe safety, they've got it nailed down. Quality or delivery are a little bit easier to imagine, you know, the lagging versus the leading. Yeah, yeah. But have you guys experimented with all or, or, or really, you know, thought about what are our lagging people indicators and, you know, what are our leading indicators? Maybe yeah. the smile being a leading indicator of, of something happening, but how does that work out here? Uh, you know, so we have, a, we have a Gemba assessment system where every exempt employee every week goes out to the floor and is asking or observing uh, to see if a system is being used well. And uh, for the coaching system, mm -hmm. the, the leading indicator is just the frequency. Uh, is it happening? When was the last time you were coached? And if, if it hasn't been to the frequency, the, the audit has failed, but the second question is, what did you talk about? Uh -huh. Was it valuable to you? Was it useful? Does it help you in your work? So for me, that's, that's also a leading indicator is, is, how does the person feel about what is happening? Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's a good example yeah. of, a, of a human uh, leading, I love uh, it. leading metric. So let's say lagging. Okay. Like we're just, playing around with this concept of we want to engage people that are fired up, they're connected to the, you know, to your purpose um, of helping people thrive at work. Uh, they're contributing, obviously, to, to helping the organization succeed. So what might be the top five lagging indicators? You know, what, what, yeah. how are we evaluating whether or not those things are happening? We're accomplishing it. So, um... We're so glad that you joined us on this video. Wasn't it great? Gary has really, really great insights on lead and lag and how all of our coaching systems really, really help us here at OT Cannon. Boy, we were left really on a cliffhanger there with those five lagging indicators that Gary's gonna talk about in the last video of the series. So subscribe if you wanna see it. Definitely give a like to this video and we'll see you next time. Hey, welcome back to another video. Hold on, I was waving at Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Karen's pulling faces. I know, this is a really bad spot to be recording. <clears throat> All right.